Okay, folks, I am Scott Grove. Welcome to my acoustic guitar lessons. This will be lesson number one. This is right after our introduction to each other and to a few things about how your guitar should be set up, how you should tune, and so forth. So if you skip that, please go back and get it so you're not left in the dark. <laughs> as generic as some of it might have sounded, it's really needed and it will be brought up many times throughout the course. Today you're going to play, and I am a teacher that makes you want to play. That's why people usually quit, because they don't learn anything that they want to learn. I start right away with chords and how to make music sound good and so forth. Okay, number one, before we get to that, it'll take about three minutes. If you're sitting down, um, put your guitar strap on if you're going to use it, but you might as well learn this now. If you're sitting down and your guitar is sitting straight, if you're looking down at your guitar, you should only see the dots that are on the side of the neck. Do not turn your guitar like this when you're sitting on the couch and look at dots or whatever you have here. If you can see that, you're, it's in the wrong position. So again, actually up like this is more of a proper you know, position. Um, if your arm hurts at all or is tight or whatever or is not just purely relaxed, then you're doing something wrong. Just loosen up. Just put your thumb on top of the neck. Let your whole guitar, your hand, arm, wrist, elbow, just hang off of your thumb, which is on top of the guitar. Just that's how you play. You're, you're not supposed to be tight. You're not supposed to grab on tight. Uh, the harder you press on the strings, um, the more sharp your strings will go in tuning, and you'll be out. Will your guitar be out of tune? No, but you're forcing it to sound out of tune. Here's my guitar in tune. Now I'm just going to press harder. That's spray pressing way too hard. So you only push down on each string as hard as it needs to be in order to make the note sound. Okay? If you lessen up on it, it'll buzz on you. Start pressing down a little more. That's all the more you need to apply to it any more than that. And it will go, it will sound out of tune, even though your guitar is in tune. Okay? So let's get right to some uh, work. And while I'm getting ready to stand up and come to you, since I don't have a camera guy here, I don't need any extra stuff. Um, if you have to put your strap on, then put it on while you are sitting down. And while it is the most comfortable for you, because when you stand, you're... Um, body becomes accustomed to playing sitting down usually so that when you stand up because it's sitting on my lap when I stand up it's still in the exact same place where I was already comfortable playing so your body does have, not have anything new to get used to I'm sitting right here with it on my lap my beautiful leg crossed and when I stand up there it is man that's the way you put it on this is how we do it. Okay. <laughs> You're like, don't do that ever again. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is just strictly learn um, one chord per lesson, and then learn how to put them all together to make music. And I'm going to give you many variations of this one chord, so you can do all kinds of stuff with it before you head on to the next lesson. So here we go with the playing part of... Lesson number one, we're going to do what is called the D chord, okay? And I expect you to know all your strings names. If you don't, lowest to highest, sounds like I got a UPS delivery. Probably another guitar. Low E, A, D, G, B, E. Okay, it's everywhere on the internet, it's everywhere on the back of your strings, it's on your thing that came with your guitar, so you ought to know that. Okay. And all your chord charts and stuff, I don't have to teach you which note is which note. That You've got every single outlet in the world on the internet to learn that as well. I will be naming things via frets. So you've got your thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, okay? First fret. That's a metal piece right there. 
One, two, and then three, it has a dot. Four, then five, it has a dot or a shark or whatever you have. Six, seven, it has another one. So you're not going to need anything more than that. Um, eight, nine, hey, there's another one. Go figure. Then it gets weird, but that's about 20 lessons from now. So every other fret has something on it but you will not be seeing it because you will be seeing the dots on the side again if you're seeing the front um, you're not holding your guitar right and do not get into that bad habit D chord okay I even had a little blue notes in there blue notes are like oops I blew that one <laughs> Uh, plenty of those come on up, trust me. Okay, so what we have is the D string open, which means you're not putting any fingers on it. Now when you're playing with your pick, it's nice to have your right hand or whichever has your pick if you're left-handed anchored to the guitar somewhere, unless you're just going like that and that's not necessary. If you ever put you notice this does not have any kind of a pick guard or uh, people overseas, you got scratch plates. Um, because if you scratch a guitar with your pick, you're playing wrong. Period. You're going to say, is Willie Nelson playing wrong because his is so torn up from his pick? Um, actually, yes. <laughs> it's a bad habit to get into. Yeah, he sounds great and so do everybody else. But it's a really, really bad habit to get into. And we'll just leave it at that. Your own style will develop, develop, and that's what it's all about. These are just learning lessons, nothing more. Okay, so you have, there you go, just the D string. You're going to put your first finger on the G string, second fret. It's a, all your notes need to curve like this. Your fingers actually need to curve. Your notes don't need to curve. <laughs> okay, so what you're doing is what's called an arch. You're building like a train tunnel so that all the strings under there can keep on ringing through because you got to make a whole lot of these. So your hands and all your fingers are going to be like this. Okay, and it will not hurt because you do not have to press hard enough to make it hurt. Again, if it does hurt, it's because of the way your guitar is currently set up. So you take it to somebody to get it fixed if you don't trust yourself or anybody on the internet to teach you how. But if it hurts at all, it is not your fault. If you take it in and get it fixed and it still hurts, take it back and get it fixed for free right away. Test it while you're there. Stay there for a half hour or 10 hours until it doesn't hurt. <laughs> okay, just experience. Okay, so we're going to play that D string. To form the rest of the chord, again, 2nd fret, G string with your 1st finger. Your 2nd finger, I'm just going to go in order, will be on that same 2nd fret right there on the high E string. That's how it will sound. It does not go on top of it. It has to go behind it. If you go too far behind, starts making all that noise and if you get right on top of it similar noise so you want to get all your fingers as close as you can to the fret without actually touching the fret okay so like that last finger is going to be your third finger and it's going to go right here that's your B string so it's the one that is not being played and it goes right here on the third fret so your dot so here's what we're looking at and if I'm off to the side, you can see my little train track, or my train tunnel, letting the notes underneath pass through, or the other strings, or letting the train pass through. Okay, each of them are that way. So I'm going to build it so that you can see that. So if anything is not on correctly, it'd be... Because you're not letting the strings pass through our little train tunnel. I know train tunnels are juvenile to talk about and a goofy way to learn this, but it makes the most sense. So there you go. I'm going to play the D string 
and each string down from there. You play that over and over again and the strings are being picked straight down. Okay? And then back up this way. Okay, my arm or my hand is rested on the guitar right here. Okay? Not, not the wrist. So everything is just going to be done with your wrist and your fingers. Nothing else. Your guitar hand your strumming hand does not leave your instrument for now, okay, for quite a while. Okay, so here's what we got. We're going to go just down, then I'm going to go ahead and go up. Now up, I'm going up on the last one, on the E string, so I'm going down, 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 up, 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 down. So when you get to that D string again, you're always going to go down on that one, and then you're always going to go upward on the high E string. That's what makes it really fluid sounding, instead of going... So get out of that habit right now, and just don't get into that habit, because listen, by again going down on the D string and up on the E string. So it's down at the beginning and up at the end. Okay. Um, just pick goes just like this. If you haven't ever held one, this is a suggestion. You do what works for you but you want that good pointy end hitting the strings, you're actually going to leave about that much of it sticking out. It's between your thumb and your first finger if you have one. Some of you don't. Uh, some people like to do it this way. Whatever works for you, cool. If it's falling out of your hands, either tighten up on it, which you should not have to do. You should never really have to use any mu muscle to do anything. Your guitar should practically play itself and if your picks are too slippery and they keep falling out of your hands and you don't want to you don't because it takes nothing to hold them if it takes too much get these cactus picks and they will never fall out of your hands otherwise super glue the pick to your finger <laughs> okay so again would be something you could do in front of the TV, anywhere in the world, bed, in the bathroom, and whatever, until you get that all right and it's not going. And don't be going down here trying to force your fingers somewhere because this hand is going to do nothing if you sit there and push things around. Again, if it feels forced, then you are playing it wrong. And by me sitting here saying you're playing it wrong, that just simply means it's not a bad thing. It just means, listen again, this should not have any tension on it at all. And your fingers should not be pushing down much. Um, you can pick up. This here's the best way to find out which one you're messing up on. Which, and that all that means is which one you're not doing the uh, train tunnel to. Um, if you're going... Well, take one up, see if you're hitting the other ones. So it's that one. So you were hitting it with something. Okay. So, and if you're hitting it and the note's not coming out, you're going to feel it on this part of your finger. Okay. So get everything ringing really well. And if you are pushing too hard, especially, or playing too hard, it's going to show up on this string, the G string. Because if you push too hard, or play too hard, it will do this. Okay, it will be out of tune sounding. If you ever hear anything out of tune, it's always going to be that G string because you didn't tune it lower. Okay, 
Now let's get notes in here that make it fun. Okay, you can do with this what you want. I'm going to show you all the extra notes you can take away and add to a D chord to make this fun. If it's not fun, you, I wouldn't want to do it either. Okay, so you've got your D chord. The cool thing to do is lift your middle finger. So now you have... Now we're just going to strum down on all four strings. Now put your middle finger back where it was. Off. On. I'll teach you all the strumming in a little bit, but I want to get all this fretting hand in your face so you have stuff to work with and this will come naturally and I'll be teaching it to you on the way but within a 20 minute lesson I want to get as many of these notes so you can still go now get rid of this back on okay another one put that back on there is putting your pinky yep fourth finger on the third fret on the high E string. Yes, you still leave that one on there. You're just going to add another one to it because you will get this. Here's a regular D chord. Now I'm going to add my pinky this, this time around. Take it off. Now take your middle finger off. Put a middle finger back on. Put your pinky on. Take your pinky off. Middle finger off. Back on. Okay, so you've got something happening already. There are many more to go, and I've got two and a half minutes to show you what those are. And that's very easy, and this is the three minutes that you're going to work on the most. Okay, the other ones are lifting your first finger, doing the same thing down here or whatever you like, but the one thing that I showed you, just the down and up thing, will get you where you need to be. It's this hand I'm worried about right now. So. So that's pulling off the first finger and then putting it back on. Okay, the weird thing about the other ones is you can start using your pinky now to do other things. Uh, you really don't want to do anything with this one that's right here on the third fret on your B string yet. We'll come to that later. Okay, so you have, the, you can take this one on and off and you can take that one on and off. We'll leave this one till later, okay? And you've got that you can put your pinky right there on the third fret. So you got all that information. Just, just a different picking pattern. I'll show it to you later. But you've heard this before. You can do that if you want. So that's. Pinky can also stretch. This is not something that should hurt, but it's just a matter of your hand getting muscle memory. Okay? Pinky up to the fourth fret on the G string. Possible just to show you later, it will go up to the fifth fret. So, your next dot, your pinky, all the way up there to the fifth fret. Okay, the last couple are going to be fourth fret on your D string with your pinky. Okay, and then 
then lift this first finger, put it on the D string second fret, and then back to normal. So that is our D lesson. We'll go through some more of that on the next lesson and then get right into another chord and start showing you how they fit together. Okay? Again, work on any kind of strumming you want to. We will do plenty of strumming, finger picking exercises, and so forth as we go. So, lots to work on there. Uh, it's just muscle memory, stretching things out, and none of it should hurt. If it does hurt, relax. That is it. Um, make sure everything is train track and train tunneled, and you'll be fine. Um, trust me. Um, it gets easier because it's not supposed to hurt. That's why they call it playing guitar, not fighting guitar. Okay, I'm Scott. See you on lesson number two. Take care.